Hello, my friends. Good morning. Welcome to Fridays on the North Fork, where I, Sunitha, and two of my co-hosts, Lauren from Story Petals and Tracy from Miss Tracy Kessler. Um, together, we invite local NOFO guests to come join us each week, a different guest. Um, today, we have Jess from, it's a delicious treat. We have Jess from That's What She Fed. Um, she does a cooking blog. Um, good morning, Tracy. How are you doing? I'm so excited. The foodie in me is super excited about today's show. Um, I can't wait for Jess to tell us um, all about her deliciousness. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning. It's a nice, cool day today. The wet temperature is just perfect, I feel. I'm not ready to let go summer, but it's perfection right now. It's actually... It's kind of nasty here on Fire Island, but well, it's um, it's gray, but the the temperature is nice. Yes, yes, I ha I'll I'll admit I have not left the living room. <laughs> I I was um, massively. This is a PSA right now for everyone. I was massively hacked. Massively hacked. They tried to steal ninety seven thousand dollars from our business accounts last week. They successfully stole three thousand dollars from me yesterday. Oh, yeah. I have been on with my, my security team has changed every password, every possible thing we have. We have done everything we need to do. Um, and they're still in there. So like serious PSA, like lock your shit down people because they're out there. Yeah. My husband's so, always complaining that my passwords are never secure. It's always the simplest you can crack into it. He's always asking me to change them. So maybe now is the time to do it. Well, honestly, I think I'm going to start to do a thing where I change them monthly. Like, it's just, I don't know, and clear your cookies or I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like I have a lot of precautions in place and, and they got to me. So I'm a, little, I'm a little off kilter right now because I've been dealing with the bank and security and everything. But Well, oh well Lauren, Lauren is carrying our sunshine today. Look at those gorgeous flowers behind you. Thank you. Yeah, Are they're those sunflowers. Yeah, they're sunflowers. Oh my god! Are they story? Wow! Oh, they're the yes. dried. You gotta bring them closer. Can you pull one out? Wow, oh they're so realistic. God. They're amazing. And then I haven't put them on yet, but these are my lavender. Wow! What are they? They're paper. They're pages of books. They're book pages. Wow. Yeah. Tracy, I have a question. Do you think there's any special privileges as co-hosts we could get from Story Petals? I mean, I'm just thinking. I like flowers. Do you like flowers? Tracy? Yeah, I'm thinking a uh, black and white beach barn type of thing would make sense. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll take the sunflower. I'm not picky. I'll take whatever's ready. <laughs> I got you covered, ladies. I got you covered. Well, yeah, good morning, please. Jess. Hi, Jess. How are you guys? Hi. Are, are you in the kitchen? You're in your amazing kitchen right now? My amazing kitchen right now. Yes, I have to say, I, I have been lucky enough to be there watching Jess do her magic and do her cooking. So it's really something amazing to watch. I, I didn't even say this to you, Jess, when I was there last time, but like, you know a true chef when they just put their hand in the spice and they just go and like throw it on. I mean, I'm like this, I'm like measure, make it even like you just like, you just know, you just do your thing. It's amazing. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> well, so for our viewers, this is Jess from that's what she fed NOFO, which is her latest endeavor. She's been on the North Fork for a long time. She's well known as a yoga instructor. Um, she hosts a lot of sort of mindfulness retreats with another friend of hers um, called NOFO Retreat. And, but her latest endeavor is that's what she fed NOFO. And it seems to be taking off like gangbusters. And she is feeding all of the North Fork with healthy treats delivered right to your door. So Jess, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing? How it, how'd you got, got into it? How it started? I know you have like a very, uh, you have a very intense relationship with food and how it's like helped heal your family. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know how far back you want me to go. <laughs> Whatever you feel comfortable with. This is your, this is your stage. I mean, it's a 30 minute show. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the short version. Um, Notes. Well, basically I've always had like a strong relationship with eating healthy, probably just the way my mom brought me up. Um, 
never really had junk food in the house, processed food, anything like that. Always just had to go eat like leftover chicken soup from the night before if I wanted a snack or something like that. Um, so never really had too much experience eating a lot of junk food, which I think is a really great thing because it set me up to really have a taste for healthy food to begin with. Um, but I've always really just loved to cook. Actually, that's a lie. I haven't always loved to cook, but somewhere along the line, I fell in love with cooking probably because of my mother who seems to have brought up a whole family of chefs. Um, and I just started cooking I don't, I, just for fun, really. And then once I had kids, that's when things really turned around. So my first kid would get really, really, really sick from every time he got a cold and anything, he would end up in the hospital. So I ended up going and I had to change his diet completely. We had to go off dairy and gluten. And I, I, I feel like I've told the story a million times, but I remember crying in the middle of the grocery store because I didn't know what I was going to feed my kid. I fed my kid like what everyone else feeds their kid, American cheese and cheese and cheese on cheese and milk. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> and I didn't know, I had no clue what to do, but anyway, ended up doing it little by little. I changed his diet and I saw huge changes. I mean, he really honestly never got sick again. He started napping. His energy went up. Like so many different things changed for him. So then the same thing, you fast forward to the next kid. I kind of was like, oh, let me give him milk too. And he also got really sick. He had an anaphylactic reaction to having milk. So then again, still cooking, still experimenting, learning how to do things different. Not loving that a lot of the options you have in the grocery store, the, the package things just were filled with junk. It just didn't make it to me. So I had to make a lot of my own stuff just by default because I really didn't like having all, all that junk in the house. Um, and then... As I continued on through my journey, like after my second kid, I ended up having a lot of health issues myself. So I ended up having to go gluten and dairy and actually grain and sugar-free for like a long time. I And so I really had to get creative. I couldn't really eat out. You know, I, I, everything was made at home. And also it started to turn into this journey of really knowing where my food came from, what I was putting on my skin, what we were using in the house to clean. Like one little door started to you know, I entered down like a hallway of a million other little doors and slowly opened all the doors. And it gets really deep and dark in there sometimes. <laughs> um, so I closed some doors and like reined it in and then really wanted to get into the fun of cooking, right? Because it was getting a little intense. Like I didn't know where I could eat anymore. I was feeling like really psychotic about the sources of my food and what kind of food I was eating. And it was really just becoming a yucky experience. It wasn't positive anymore, even though we were having such positive experience with the results of eating healthy. Um, so I just, I don't know, really, I just kind of started to calm down a little bit and cooking more at home. And I started cooking for friends a lot. That was really the thing that started this whole thing is that I'm cooking for friends and they're like, oh my God, this is the most amazing meal ever. And then I say, oh, you know, it doesn't have this in it or it doesn't have that in it. I think the thing that strikes people the most is when I make something with like a, a plant-based cheese. Right. And they're thinking they're getting lasagna with real ricotta cheese and it's cashews, you know, so those kinds of things would happen. And then friends started asking if I could cook for them for the week. You know, you're always giving me this food, like, let me pay you. And so I ended up two of my really good friends back in, I think it was like October of last year, asked me to just cook for them for the week. And one friend sat down with me. I still remember the ride in the car where she really helped me like write down a price list and tell me to make a business out of this. And I wasn't really sure I could do it. And it went from those two friends, I think there was a third friend that week to like nine the next week. And I think the following week was 29 people. I think it took three. Wow. Oh my God. It was wow. the craziest thing. I, I had no clue what I was doing, but somehow just did it. Maybe it was four weeks that it took that long, but it was it, within the first month I cooked for 29 people. And I remember just thinking, I have no clue what the heck is happening. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the true sign of a good business because you found a need that the community had and then you just filled it and that's why it took off like that well everybody's hungry so that <laughs> and, I, and i think also on the north fork people are already a little bit ahead of the game in that they do care about where their food is coming from yeah. it's so many local farms and stuff but then you being able to cook for them is helping the people who are busy and even though they want to do that can't take the time out to you know cook from scratch or find the ingredients I recently, a good friend of mine is a vegan and ate, I love feta. And we made a tomato basil salad, but she doesn't eat the regular feta. So she bought vegan feta. That and was I, so good. I enjoyed it better than really? regular 
and I am I am you know I'm a self-proclaimed foodie. So for me, food, food, food has to be delicious. I'm okay with where it comes from as long as it tastes good. But this vegan feta was so good, I might just replace it and substitute it for every time, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, honestly, so do you guys remember that like Instagram craze with that feta bake? Do you guys yeah. remember? I did it. I did it. Yes. <laughs> so I actually, I have a client that I cooked for them last week and he's vegan and he asked me for the steak. So I did it with the vegan cheese and they loved it. They wanted it again. This I just, I'm about to make it in like 20 minutes. Um, it's, so, it's really, yes, how do you right. like, how does the business set up? Do you have a set menu every week? Does it change every week? Like, how does it work? Well, okay. So there's, a, I offer a lot of different services. I'm trying not to insert any bad jokes here. <laughs> Well, we, sh we should talk about the fact that all of her Instagram posts, if you're not following Jess yet, and you enjoy innuendos, specifically food innuendos, then you will enjoy all of Jess's posts. Oh, wait, <laughs> they have food innuendos? I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, anyway, okay, so I offer a lot of different things, but there's, I feel like the two main things that's happening is one is on Tuesdays, I you get on my mailing list, so that would be like the best way to join in on this party um, I send out a menu and there's there's four meals two sides and a whole slew of add-ons I'm also working with a couple other people for the add-on section um, so th there's different pricing options too which you can go ahead and take a look at on my website um, but you put in an order it really should be as soon as possible because lucky for me I'm selling out really quickly and I'll eventually try to add in a second day so they're you have a chance to get in twice, but right now it's just that one day. So you, Tuesday, you get the email, you sign up, you just email me at the moment, tell me what you want. And I take the orders personally. And then in a week, so the following Monday, I cook it. And then that Monday night, you pick it up. You and pick it up. Okay. I, some deliveries, just depending on where it is and timing. So there's a few people I do deliver for, for a little added fee. Okay. Um, and the second thing I do is I do private chef work. So I'm doing the same thing, but for people who have more specific needs or just, you know, they don't want that menu. They want their menu. Most often it comes down to people who, you know, are very specific in what they need and the modifications they would want from my regular menu are too much for me to do for one person or one family. So then I'll just do separately something for them. And the few clients that I'm working with now most closely, I'm also picking up their CSA from Sang Lee and using that in the, Oh, awesome. That's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Jess, with so, your questions, can you list your, tell us your Instagram handle and also your website where people can go and get all this information? Sure. So um, the website is that's what she fed, F E D, not said. <laughs> that's what she fed nofo.com. And then the handle is that's what she fed nofo, but underscore between each word. Great. Yeah, so that's interesting that you mentioned the CSA because I feel like when you were speaking before about, and Sunita, you were saying that, you know, a lot of people in the North Fork are very focused on eating healthy and eating with what's in season. But then there's some, like someone like me where I look at half this stuff and I'm like, what do I do with this? I have no idea what to do with this. Jess, I think you should start doing like cooking classes with us too because we, I want to know what the heck to do with all this stuff. I don't have no idea. There's been a huge request for that. I'm adding it to the list of things to do. There's a few things. <laughs> I really want to do. <laughs> and that's actually top priority. I think I've had the most, re other than asking to deliver to places like Brooklyn, my second biggest request is cooking classes. Yeah. I I love that that you're taking the straight the CSA and cooking because I don't know if you guys have seen that meme is you know after you buy all the produce at the grocery store and you come home you realize you're really not that person you were when you went to the yeah. grocery store. And I'm always throwing it out. I mean I, I eat a lot of salad, but I find there's always wilted greens in my fridge because always. I'm not eating them fast enough. So I love that people who want to make a commitment and buy from the CSA now have a way to use it up quickly and in a delicious way rather than bringing it home and then throwing it out four days later. So I love that. That's a part of the me is teach. So, I mean, the Instagram, the, the joke of the Instagram really is that it's just a joke, right? Like I eating, eating food, um, healthy has become such a serious, like I feel like just awful topic for so many people. It's overwhelming. And you bring in these jokes and it turns out like I'm hooking people and teaching you these little things through really dirty jokes. But the truth is I really, that's what I want to do is be teaching people about how to do this themselves. Like this isn't, I, if someone asks for a recipe, I'm giving them the recipe. I'm, this isn't about me doing it myself and not sharing anything. Right. I want to be able to 
you know, use the stuff, try new things, be healthier, add more variety to their diet, especially in terms of plants. And, you know, really get in touch with your local farmer, what questions to ask, what to be looking for, all of these things are, you know, huge passion of mine and like what drives me the most. And I want, that's what I want other people doing. Of course, I want people to eat my food, but because that's my business. But really, I just want to be bringing all the goodness back into this because I feel like we just have this like total negative cloud over eating healthy and what that's like. It's really about making the change, right? Yeah. So I saw, I think it was in your stories yesterday that you did like a food shopping for a client. Is that something else you offer? Because I want you to take, I've, we've talked about this before, yeah. but I say to Jess all the time, I walk into Whole Foods or Wild by Nature and even Trader Joe's and I have the best of intentions, but because they're not the, see like unlike Jess, I did grow up on processed food. I grew up on ragu. I grew up on, you know, all that stuff. So I walk into those stores and I, and they're brands I've never seen before. There's words I've never seen before. I know I've heard them. So I'm like, I think I should be buying this, but I don't know what it is actually. And then if I buy it, it's just going to sit there. Like Sunita said, I'm not going to use it. I don't know. I really want, I would want to go food shopping with you to say like, okay, if I'm going to buy coconut flour, like what the hell am I using this for? You know, like what am I doing? And talk about like what I would really eat and what I would really need. Because then when I try to cook healthy, I don't have anything I need. And it's like, I have to go buy like $500 worth of groceries for one recipe because I don't have any of it. So I think, I right. think that would be, do you, do you take people food shopping or do you food? I shop have done that actually with friends like, or like given them lists and told them, cause that's actually one, it's a post that's coming up that Mary Latham and I are working on, but um, just about like what I keep in my pantry. Okay. You know, so the, the initial stuff, but you know, there is a method to how you shop. You know, I don't know if you've heard this before, but having to shop the perimeter of the grocery store, right? not go into those middle sections. So I make a list and I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm really into eating healthy the way I eat, or I don't even want to say eating healthy. Cause what does that mean? But I'm, I'm used to the way I eat. So I'm not tempted by like fruit loops in the middle of the store. So it's not a big deal for me at the moment, but like it really saves time if you're shopping the perimeter of the store, right? If you're just going to the produce section and maybe just going to like the beverage section, like the cold sections, yeah. you're really spend like a quarter of the time in the store. So that alone right there, I feel like is like just the lesson in and of itself. <laughs> um, we have a question about where you get vegan feta. And we have a lot of people who are were saying yes to virtual classes, by the way. Um, Tracy, that's, you're going to have to set this one up. With me. I, I can do that. I can do that. Um, the vegan feta you can get in a lot of places, but I, I specifically go to Fit Foods in South Hold. Or if I'm, if I'm in West, I'll go to Whole Foods or Wild by Nature. I'll show you the brand. Hold on a second. I love Fit Foods. I'm such a, I'm very lucky I live so close to it, but. So Lauren, we should go there because that's another place that I drive past it going, I should go there, but I'm afraid I'm oh, going good. to. And they're so helpful yeah. in there. You can go oh, yeah, Matt's the best. Like, Fit Foods, I, they're just so kind. And my husband um, is gluten-free and we ate keto for a very long time. And trying to eat things that don't have processed sugar or any sugar for that matter um, was really difficult. And to have someone you can actually like have an intelligent conversation with, it was just such a pleasant experience. And therefore, I mean, also supporting local business. I mean, they're always looking for uh, new shoppers. So if anyone is local to the North Fork, I can't suggest that food more. It sounds like Matt needs to be a ho uh, guest on our show. Oh, <laughs> good. You're yeah. right. I'll have to add him to the list. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, what's the feta cheese? We need to see it. Vegan feta cheese. Is it backwards? Can you read the brand, Jess? Because it's upside down. Yeah. Bio Life, V I O Life. Okay, thank okay. you. I mean, and it, the ingredients are uh, it's filtered water, coconut oil, potato starch, salt. Uh, something I don't know what that is, so we should ask. And then just olive extract. And there is vitamin B12, which I don't love, but it's one thing. And it's only like six ingredients, so. Like I said, I'm, I'm a foodie. For me, it has to taste good first. And I'm all about eating healthy when I can. So I don't mind making small changes, incremental changes that I can just add on without feeling like I got to, you know, change my entire pantry. But like I said, this feta, um, and, I've, and I've tried many other things. I think um, even the veganaise, like the vegan mayonnaise, oh my God, it's delicious. You can't really tell the difference. And what's in it is so much better for you than what's in some of the other stuff. Even though it sounds strange, you know, but at least everything what you read out is plant-based instead of, you know, 
Um, but and it still can't tolerate dairy. You know, then it even compounds the problem. It's one thing to do it as a choice, but it's also another thing when your body can't tolerate it. Um, and so I'm glad that there are more options out there now than they perhaps were five or 10 years ago. I and even talk about that though, because like even then this, like I didn't read the ingredients on this. And like, I'm now I'm, there's two things in it. I, one, I don't know. And you know, you have to be really careful because we can like be, especially that's what I found out initially is that gluten-free we think is healthy. It's not actually like gluten-free is probably more junk food than ever. If you get you for packaged stuff. So yeah. I want to, I want to clarify when I say that I'm gluten-free, it's really that I'm just eating foods. Well, I'm actually not gluten-free anymore, but I, the foods that I cook are all gluten-free and it's really just eating things that are, it's not things that are substituted for. It's just whole foods that don't have any added ingredients. So that's huge. Somebody yeah. asked about the vegan, is vegan mayo primal? I don't know what that means. Primal kitchen oh. is vegan mayo. It has eggs. Yeah. Okay. okay. Also making mayo. I mean, I'm not a cook. Before I met my husband, people would literally come over to my house and bring olive oil. Like I do not cook. Um, so meeting <laughs> Jeff, a game changer. Um, but uh, making mayo is not hard. Like actual mayo is just like so easy. So it, there are things that we can be doing um, on very like a mind, like very basic level that you can make a change to that diet that just really makes a difference. Yeah, that's a big thing for me. Like milk and people like jaw drop at that, but it's really the easiest thing in the world and it has nothing in it but almonds and water. And if you pick up a <laughs> bottle of almond milk at the grocery store, there's like 10 other ingredients that are not almonds or water. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that should be another class. I'm just, I'm going to make a whole curriculum for you, Jess. I, so it, another it, class it should be just. like if those kind it, of basic, yeah, those kind of basic things, you know, like learning how to make things that are very simple that we're buying that we don't need to buy because I, I just feel so overwhelmed by all of it. Again, I mean, I'm, I'm like, give me a box of rice aroni because I don't know what else to do. Like, you know, so I need someone to teach me. Because and going into momhood, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, yes. Betty That's loves to stir anything. So yeah, I, I think it's just like a really great way to introduce it to your kids really early. Um, not saying we do it all the time. If you walk into my house, I have mac and cheese. Um, but it, it is a great way to try to build yeah. that really early um, when you can. I have a Vitamix and I need to know how to use it for something other than smoothies, basically. What do you <laughs> Have you discovered that yet, Tracy? Oh my God, the best dessert. Top which one? Cream. Cashew cream. Just take cashew. Oh. Cashew. So in the Vitamix, because that's what you need the Vitamix for. I know. I only use my Vitamix for smoothies, and I need. To, I know there's so many other amazing things I could be doing with it. Well, on my bucket list is soup. So maybe you could teach me to make some well, soup I'm, this summer. A hundred recipes for cashew cream, but my simplest is just soak the uh, raw cashew nuts for like thirty minutes in water. Drain out the water, put in the Vitamix, add a little bit of water to puree it, and just creamy and smooth. Put it on top of berries. I mean, you can even make it savory. I have to give a shout out to my friend Sabine, who's a dietitian. That's always, you know, she's a nutrition dietitian. She's always trying to incorporate good stuff. But the cashew cream with maybe a little bit of honey, or I think she used maple syrup on top of berries or on top of anything. It's so delicious. I can't get enough of it. Jess, I think we've got like 10 new customers on here who want to learn <laughs> exactly. from you. So. <laughs> I love it. So actually, we're getting to the end of the session, uh, our, our session together. I feel like I'm a therapist. It's end of our session. <laughs> it really has been therapeutic. Um, but we want to go through what the fabulous pieces about living on the North Fork are. So Jess, um, favorite, I'm going to start, I'm gonna start hard. Favorite restaurant? I didn't want you to ask that first. I know. <laughs> I, I knew it was going to be a hard one. Just rip the Band-Aid off, babe. Okay. I two that come to mind. I'm always in love with First and South. Yeah. Uh, I, I just love it. And then recently, I'm really obsessed with Barrow. Yes. And they're, and you have to get their mushroom and mung bean burger. And it, yeah. I mean, and wait, and also, I mean, I don't know if they're going to get mad at me for changing this up, but get it on the sourdough bread. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but it. That's like my favorite thing. So those two places are off the top of my head, but there's so many other ones. Like I could go down the list forever. I think yeah. those are the two that get voted each week. I think. Oh, really? That's oh, yeah. Her. First and South, we mentioned Sarah like every week and she hasn't been a guest yet. So oh, she for, should. we're on it. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. been support for me. Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. But then also Barrow House is just a favorite of ours. Their cauliflower soup is like unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I would have it every day. 
Thick Bee Curry is unbelievable. So I <laughs> on everything they make. Oh yeah, it's so good. Okay, so so Jess, in true what she fed fashion, when you strip down to your bikini, are you <laughs> watching a sunrise or a sunset? <laughs> She's been preparing that question oh, all week for you. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna say sunset. I'm gonna say sunset. And do you have any tips on, on where you go to watch I, it? <laughs> telling you there. <laughs> the sound. Yes. Yeah. I can't, you can't tell anyone because I told everyone about my favorite beach and now it's like completely no. crowded. Yeah, you can't tell anyone. Sorry. Yeah. All right, so what's your favorite winery or brewery to hang out at? Um, I was thinking about this one, too. I, I think McCall is always going to be my favorite. It's, it's Well, it's walking distance to my house, which makes it really nice. But it's really quaint. It's sweet. The wine is delicious. They used to – I don't know if they still do it. Like, pre-COVID, they did the burger night, which was one yeah, of my – Yeah, nights. they still do. They I, still do. They're family-friendly. I mean, I've gone there with all different types of – groups you know just with girls on my own like with with my kids I mean with families it's just I don't know it's just one of my favorites and I really do love their wine I love that they have their cows there so you can get your meat there too like it's one of, it's just really the essence of the North stop shopping the owner really is trying to preserve like so much of the land out here which I love too so yeah that's not I mean that's not I also went to recently was it Rose Hill is that mm -hmm. that one was really nice and the staff was unbelievably nice, actually. That was a huge thing there. Oh, awesome. All right, so I have both hard questions. Um, favorite farm stand? Oh, these are impossible. <laughs> um, I, I guess you'd have to, I'd have to say Sangley. I spend the most time there, um, and I have the most relationships with the people who work there, so I'd have to say Sangley, but there's so many wonderful places here. They really are. I like all your tomatoes that are just like ugly and that no one wants them. And I do, I want them all. Oh, and you know, what's actually a really cute one is right by my house is that I think it's called little, little farm stand. It's yes. Like it really is little. It really yeah. is. <laughs> one too. Uh, you know, I also want to say that, you know, Sang Lee is certified organic, but there's so many farms out here that are, growing organic food and they just don't have the certification so make sure to ask the farmer or ask the person at the stand if you're interested in that like if you don't want the pesticides and people will be really honest I went to a farm stand once and said do you spray this and they're like oh hell yeah we spray that yeah. <laughs> so I actually I have a huge um, right. allergy to pesticides so I uh, I have to be really really careful I thought I was actually allergic to some fruit for a while and I was specifically not eating certain um, nightshade vegetables and uh, fruit Last it's really just pesticides that are in the ground that just don't. I was I was at Krupski last week, and to your point, Jess, they have they everything that's not sprayed. They have a sign on saying this hasn't been sprayed, so you could get you know both options. Yeah. Um, right. So it is important to sort of just look and pay attention because I know the certification process is very complicated, but a lot of them are still following the practices, even yeah. though they may not be certified. So I, I'm glad you brought attention to that. Oh, speaking yeah. of Krupski, real quick. Sorry, um, I know Rachel just posted a video of how she makes. Uh, one of her squashes. Yes. I, I don't want to say the wrong one, but I think it was uh, the acorn squash. I think it was the yeah, acorn. Squash. That was really interesting. It was something I would not have thought to do, and I also get gifted squashes, and I just I, I shellac them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With that, with that olive oil you got gifted. Yes, Uncle yes. Pat. <laughs> um, somebody said Surrey Lane is also certified organic. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So. All right, so as we get to the close here, tell us in a few sentences, which we know is hard, why you love being a part of and living on the North Fork. Um, I think this is it. It's the community. You know, it's, I mean, it, some people hate that it's such a small area. I mean, I left with no intention of, I grew up here and left in 2000 with that no intention of coming back and came back and I couldn't, I, I, there's no better decision than have coming back here. I, um, but I just love the community. I love that everyone's really trying to work together and support each other, especially now as like a, a female business owner. I've really felt that. Yeah. So that's probably my favorite thing about it out here. That's well, amazing. Yes, we could keep talking to you for an hour and I have no doubt that you, we are going to have you back on because we have so much more to talk about. Um, so come back when we're doing these virtual classes, I guess, Tracy, you have work. Yeah, to do. <laughs> apparently we're doing them. Yes. And, and I think we're also going to be doing a female business, uh, networking group. I feel like that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. That's yeah. been for a while. That's yeah. Fun. Weekend coming up ahead, I guess there's a maritime festival in Greenport. I'm sure yeah. we'll bump into a lot of locals. I don't know if you guys are planning to go. I think the weather's supposed to be for the beautiful, um, pretty beautiful. I am going to be at, I know I, we did the live last week from there at the Landcraft Garden Foundation. Yes. Um, Slow Food is having a walk in wine event. So if you want to join, you can still That's get- That's tomorrow, right? That's tomorrow, tomorrow morning at Landcraft Garden Foundation, which is in Mattachuck. And if you can't make it to the event, still check out Landcraft Garden Foundation because it is, it's like the New York going to the New York Botanical Garden, but not having to drive all that way and just being local. So definitely yeah. check. It out. I'm going to do a shameless plug too. We just announced at a North Fork affair that we are doing our photo fall session again this year. So Saturday, October 2nd, or no, Sunday, October 2nd and Saturday, uh, October 24th. I might've messed up the Saturday Sundays, but 2nd and 24th at, at Krupski Farms. Um, we have limited spots. So if you want to join, you can DM me or you can email, it, email me at Tracy at a North Fork Affair. We've already got people signed up. We have a return people from last year. So there are, they, they obviously love their photos. So come awesome. to nice. Speaking of plugs, Lauren, I want to hear about your tie dye, or not tie, hand dye flowers. <laughs> I mean, tie dye. <laughs> no. I, I, the reason I kept walking away is because the bees think my flowers are real. No way. <laughs> yeah. It was like a swarm. I was trying to act cool and I was like, this is those, so not okay. Those pink uh, ones are stunning. I mean, I know. Oh, thank you so much, ladies. I'm really excited and probably later today, most likely tomorrow, but we're launching our website as well. So I will definitely Yay, post that. Congrats. Thank you so much. I, it's harder than building flowers. <laughs> yes. Well, ta tag us in your announcement and we'll all share it. I definitely will. Thank you so much. But yeah, I'm really excited and I'll be posting a lot more um, with a lot of the new flowers that we're making and custom orders are coming in. So um, I'm really excited. Perfect. Thank, well, thank you, Jess, so much for being on. I know you have to get cooking, so we appreciate your time. I love I'll see thank you guys. You. Yes. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.